So a warm welcome to all the first timers and a big shout out to the patrons of Curious Minds community. Uh, thank you for your interest in science. So this, uh, just a reminder, this meetup Zoom session will be recorded and tomorrow I will upload it on the YouTube channel, the link of which will be shared in the meetup chat. Today we are discussing what are neurodegenerative diseases and how they, uh, how do they affect the brain? I know that some of you might not be science experts, but worry not, we are going to make this both interesting and fun. We will be diving into the world of neurodegenerative diseases, exploring the mysteries of the brain and uncovering the ways by which we can delay the onset and progression of neurodegenerative diseases. And the best part, there's no need to stress about remembering every detail. We won't be having a pop quiz afterward, I promise. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey as we embark on the scientific adventure together. I promise you will leave here with a newfound appreciation for the amazing world of science and the incredible discoveries that are shaping our understanding of the human brain. So let's get started. And remember, curiosity is the key to unlocking the wonders of science. So don't hesitate to ask questions or share your thoughts after the talk. Before going into detail of neurodegenerative diseases, uh, let me introduce myself. I am a cancer immunologist, educator, and a science communicator. I write two newsletters, which are free to subscribe. The details are given here. And uh, we also have a science book club on Meetup, where we meet every month, uh, once in a month. And to this time, we are discussing uh, The Body Keeps the Score, uh, which is a very interesting uh, book to read, a very simply written book to understand, not a lot of science, though it, it describes everything in detail. So it's a very good book. We are meeting at April 28th to discuss this book. So now let's dive deep into neurodegenerative diseases. So humans are living longer and with that suffering a higher burden of these diseases. The word neurodegenerative is composed of the prefix neuro which designates nerve cells or neurons and degeneration, which refers to, in the case of tissues or organs, a process of losing structure or function. So neurodegenerative diseases are a group of conditions that affect the brain and the nervous system. They cause a progressive decline in the function of nerve cells, leading to problems with movement, thinking and behavior. In simple terms, these diseases occur when brain cells become damaged and eventually die. So let's understand a little bit about the brain and how it functions. So this is the anatomy of the brain. The brain is the most complex part of the human body. It's just three pound organ and it is the seat of intelligence. It's interpret, our interpret, or inter, interpreter of our senses initiator of body movement and controller of behavior. Lying in the bony shell and washed by a protective fluid, the brain is the source of all qualities that define our humanity. So if you, if you look at the brain structure, the first thing we see, um, it is divided into three main parts, the forebrain, midbrain, and the hindbrain. And if you go into further details, so this is the middle uh, figure, focus on the middle figure. So you will see different regions of the brain and each of these regions have distinct function and they cross talk with each other. So they are not performing separately. They are cross talking with each other every time when they are doing its function. So uh, the first is the cerebellum. So this whole region here is the cerebellum, which makes us human which makes us intelligent this is the uh, seat of intelligence and it helps us to make decisions and um, and every part of the uh, every part of the decision making is responsible by this particular structure of the brain and then we have this cerebellum here uh, which is co which coordinates movement and is involved in learning new movements so if you are playing uh, tennis or if you are playing piano, so this is the region which is getting activated. So and we, if we go deep into the brain, 
this figure on the right. Uh, so if we go deep in the brain, there are three important regions. I will not go. I will not go into the detail. Brain is very complex, so we will just touch upon the important regions. So in inside the brain, we have three important regions: hypothalamus, hippocampus, and thalamus. And here, where amygdala also sits, the stress center of our uh, of of our brain. So hypothalamus is um, so hypothalamus is involved in many functions. It is the emotional center. It controls the molecules that make you feel angry, unhappy. Every kind of emotion is controlled by the hypothalamus. The major functions. So they do a lot of things, but these are the major functions. Then is the thalamus, which is which is lying between the hypothalamus, and it is a clearing house for information, which is going to the spinal cord and the cerebrum. So this is the control center for hypothalamus and the cerebrum. And then we have hippocampus, which is the memory indexer. It is sending memories out to the appropriate part of the cerebral hemisphere for long-term storage. And this is this region is actually uh, um, it degenerates during the Parkinson's disease, and that's why the Parkinson disease, uh, the people suffering from Parkinson, they have tremors, rigidity, and a stiff, uh, shuffling walk. So the nerve cells of this region gets degenerated. We will go into more detail of this, but this is the basic structure of the brain and the different regions of the brain. Now let's go into a little bit more in detail. So if you cut the brain, the cross section of the brain will look like this. So it can be clearly uh, distinguished as gray matter and white matter. If we stain the cross sectional section of the brain, by a dye. So we will just see the gray color and the white color. So the gray matter is primarily involved in processing information and executing various cognitive functions, whereas the white matter is essential for connecting different brain regions and facilitating efficient communication between them. So here is your white matter and this is your gray matter. So when I will tell you about the neurons, you will understand this. So let's first go into the neurons. So the brain and the rest of the nervous system is composed of many different types of cells, but the primary functional unit is neuron or the nerve cell. So all sensations, movements, thoughts, memories, and feelings are the result of the signals that pass through these neurons. So this particular figure here, left one, is a neuron. So it has a cell body, and then it has this exon, and then the dendrites. So this exon is covered by myelin sheath and here is your cell body. So when I say the gray matter or white matter, so exons are present in your uh, gray matter and white matter is where the myelin sheath is. And because of the difference in their color, they look like white or gray. So now let's understand how the neurons are communicating with each other. And this is the main thing, like why uh, we, how our brain is functioning is because of these neurons and how these neurons are transmitting information from one neuron to the other neuron is via this thing, which is called the synapse. So when a neuron, this is the first neuron and this one is the second. So neuron, the first neuron will wants to talk to the second it will send signals via this neurotransmitters or it can do via electrical transmission. So we, will, we are mainly focusing here on the neurotransmitters. So these two neurons will come close to each other. The first neuron will secrete neurotransmitters and the second neuron will receive it and thus the signal will be transmitted from one to the other. And then there are very different neurotransmitters which have different functions. So Five of them are listed here, acetylcholine, glutamate, GABA, serotonin, dopamine. You must have heard about these two a lot, but glutamate is actually the one which is, is uh, predominant and it is like the dominant uh, neurotransmitter. So let's understand a little bit about each of them. So acetylcholine is the 
uh, excitatory tra- neurotransmitters. So it can be one which is giving a positive signal and the other can be which gives the negative signal or a posit- a positive or inhibitory signal. So acetylcholine is one which is the giving the excitatory or the positive signal to the other cell. So this is actually responsible for your muscle contractions and it also helps glands to secrete hormones. This particular kind of uh, neurotransmitter is actually affected during Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's is um, associated with cognitive decline and it's difficult to form memory. And so this is the neurotransmitter which gets depleted in Alzheimer's patients. Now let's go on to the other one, which is glutamate. It is, it is the major excitatory neurotransmitter. And glutamate is, uh, the, dis, the lack of glutamate is, rela- is linked with Parkinson's disease and stroke or seizures, or it increases sensitivity to pain. So glutamate plays a major role. Then we have GABA. GABA is gamma amino butyric acid. And it is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It helps to control your muscle activity and it is an important part in your visual system. So in the Huntington's disease, um, the epileptic seizures or tremors are actually treated by drugs which increases GABA labels. So these neurotransmitters are very important. They, the absence uh, or presence of them, so over-presence, or less of it can play a major role in the physiology, like the, it can disturb the functions a lot. And so the other one is serotonin. Serotonin, we have heard, uh, like the, it is termed as the happy hormone, but serotonin has major uh, functions other than the, just giving the happy signal to the body. It actually constricts your blood vessels and brings on sleep. So it is very important for sleep. If you are someone who is having sleep disorders and it is something, it can be related to low levels of serotonin. So uh, it uh, during depression also, serotonin levels are low. And so, and too much of serotonin can actually lead to seizures. So the last one is dopamine. Dopamine is... Uh, regarded is well known for the anticipatory hormone and we chase dopamine we are addiction it is related to addiction but other than that dopamine is involved in controlling complex movements and the loss of dopamine activity is actually responsible for muscle rigidity in parkinson's disease so as you can understand each of these neurotransmitter is responsible for some kind of disease, neurodegenerative diseases. And now you must be understanding what, how, why neurons are so important and how they are talking to each other. And these neurotransmitters are actually responsible for taking the message from one neuron to the other. So this, this is what all uh, basics of brain, neurons and neural con- communication is. Now, I will not go too much about the science of this, but let's just take a deeper look into how this brain looks in real. So this is the real brain and this is the neurons. Um, They are being stained. uh, So they are emitting some certain kind of fluorescence. And this is neurons, which looks like under the microscope. These two neurons are talking to each other. So now... uh, Another cool aspect of the brain is the blood-brain barrier. So brain is very important for us. It's, uh, it, it, is, it is giving us the personality, controlling everything in our body. So brain is protected. So we have different layers of meninges. So it's under the skull, which is a seven-layer structure, which is very hard to break. And then besides that, we have these meningeal barriers and then we have a cerebrospinal fluid brain barrier and then we have blood brain barrier so there are a lot of barriers uh, 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 which are protecting the brain why it is so because 
brain is very vulnerable right so in our body we uh, are being exposed to uh, germs or microbes or uh, pollens allergens a lot of things but this doesn't go to your brain so brain circulation system is different from your body's circulation system so brain has to be protected brain immune cells are very different than your body's immune cells so this is how your uh, brain is protected if under these neurodegenerated diseases brain inflammation neuroinflammation is one of the major factors which can lead to neurodegenerative diseases and this happens sometimes because of this barrier blood brain barrier is broken and why it gets broken there are many reasons for that we will go into detail of some of the reasons but this is a very complex complex multi uh, symptomatic thing so many factors multifactorial things are responsible for breaking the blood brain barrier but this is the cool thing about the brain so just a general uh, view how it looks so this is the capillary in general this will be in your peripheral so rest of the body's capillary looks like this this is your uh, artery which carries the blood and this is the endothelial cells endothelial cells are blood cells which are covering the uh, capillary this is the normal and this is how it looks in the brain so you have a cap blood capillary and then it is covered by the endothelial cells which are specialized cells not the same as this this these are specialized endothelial cells and then we have tight junctions here so in this case we have intracellular spaces but in this case we have tight junctions so each of this cell is overlapping the other cell so there is no space in between for anything to pass so this is the first barrier and then we have the other barrier which is called the astrocytes so astrocytes are very big cells immune cells which are covering this so these are also the second layer of protection so any immune any foreign body will come these astrocytes will engulf it because these are phagocytic cell e eating cells so the these particular immune cells eat cells so they will eat all the microbes so this is the second layer of protection so you can understand this brain is very vulnerable and it is it has developed it has designed methods to protect itself so this is very cool about the brain so now let's jump into the neurodegenerative diseases and these are many different kind of neurodegenerative diseases here so parkinsons huntington's alzheimers multiple sclerosis we hear about these four a lot and then we have prion disease sma and spinocerebral ataxia so these are few and the list is uh, uh, the list is endless like there are many neurodegenerative diseases but they are rare kind these are common and these are also linked to genetic so that's why it is very common and we see a lot so now uh, we will go a little bit into detail about the characteristic features of different neurodegenerative diseases so first is alzheimers alzheimers is associated with cognitive decline there is memory loss confusion problems with reasoning and decision making then it is associated with depression anxiety agitation and mood swings so alzheimers is a very slow progressing disease we i will go in the for the sake of the time i will just go into little bit detail about alzheimers and not about the rest of the diseases um i will devote another meet up for each of the diseases because it's very important and very a uh, different pathophysiology for every disease so we will devote uh, meet ups for each and every disease later on but now uh, then alzheimers is linked with this and then we have parkinsons which is associated with tremors muscle stiffness slow movements difficulty with balance and coordination and then uh, after this as the disease progresses it is also linked with cognitive decline so at the end every disease is linked with dementia and loss of memory 
and then we have huntington's disease which is also involved with involuntary movements muscle stiffness problems with balance and coordination uh, cognitive decline is seen in this disease also then is depression irritability and mood swings so th then there is als which is progressive muscle weakness and stiffness leading to difficulties in speaking swallowing and even breathing cognitive decline is associated with this disease also and then there is frontotemporal dementia so frontotemporal is just the brain region where it is affected and it is related with problems with language behavior executive function there is behavioral and emotional changes uh, problem with language and why this is like these all comes under neurodegenerative disease umbrella and they affect different regions of the brain and there is different physiology to it but you will see there is a common pattern at the end it starts with something else but it leads to this memory loss cognitive difficulty and we will understand why it happens so first of all let's understand the common mechanisms of neurodegeneration like up till now we are hearing like what are these diseases what is the different characteristics but why these diseases happen so number one is the we will go in the this is no specific order but let's go into one one by one every each of this uh, particular reasons for why we can have neurodegenerative diseases so oxidative stress is one so the imbalance between the production of these reactive oxygen species and the ability of cells to detoxify these reactive molecules can lead to oxidative damage of lipids proteins and dna so in our body let me explain this in our body we have this mechanism of um reduce this oxy oxygen species um how will i explain so we have like if oxygen free oxygen radicals can actually damage our genetic material so we have a mechanism of detoxifying this free oxygen radicals and this mechanism is known as ros redox oxidative system a species so we have this mechanism in our body and this is mainly done by the mitochondria which is present in our cells if you remember the uh, this neuron neuron slide here in the cell body you have lot of mitochondria and mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell so neurons utilize a lot of energy so mitochondria is the main energy center and mitochondria is also protecting these neurons from the free oxidative radicals so free oxidative radicals can come from any different sources the, they can come from uh, carcinogens or toxic toxin uh, or any kind of uh, viral diseases also so when if something goes wrong in your mitochondria there is uh, this balance is lost then it can damage the dna and it can damage the neurons so this is the first factor so mitochondrial dysfunction is the another if mitochondria is not working well uh, then there will be increased oxidative stress in the body then there's the another important factor is neuroinflammation what is neuroinflammation inflammation we we you all must be familiar with the word inflammation uh, this was very popular when the covid was happening so inflammation is when the um, immune cells get activated and they secrete certain inflammatory factors like interleukin 6 or interleukin uh, 12 so these are the factors which are being secreted and they increase the immune cells and they changes the physiology of the body and they can damage the dna also so neuroinflammation is another then there are uh, these diseases certain diseases are genetically linked and we will talk about this in a while i will show you the slide what are the genes which are related to uh, genetic reasons of neurodegenerative diseases and then uh, other important thing is the environmental factors 
exposure to certain toxins infections and these factors can increase the neuroinflammation in the brain and can damage the neurons so we can control these factors and i will go into detail so now these these are the genes particular genes which are related to different diseases neurodegenerative diseases this these are the ones which we know and this list is not exhaustive so uh, i will not go into detail of this this is this is not important so if you want to i will share this presentation you can just go through it if you have done uh, your gene profiling if you want to know but one thing is uh, important to know that if you have certain kind of uh, um, mutation in these genes then the environmental factors are also a big contributing factor for that so that doesn't mean that if you're carrying this gene 100% you are susceptible for the disease so this is a tricky part to understand and each disease has a different uh, each gene has a different function so now let's understand a little bit about which part of the brain is affected in which uh, in which diseases so in case of alzheimer there is particularly disturbance in the hippocampus which is the memory and the learning center and that's why the memory loss thing happens in parkinsons the dopamin dopaminergic so the dopamine producing neurons uh, they get damaged and that's why there is loss of movement control in the case of hunting huntington disease there is also um, the neurons which are involved in movement and cognition they get lost uh, they get degenerated or they are uh, they die and in case of als you have with motor neurons which are affected and like this different regions of the brain are affected in different diseases so another important factor you must have heard it a lot when you hear about park um, alzheimer's disease that there is this amyloid and tau tangles so this is the another um, important thing to understand that all these diseases it's not the loss of the neurons it is also the uh, protein um, so these proteins they they are folded in a particular structure to perform function Uh, to to perform their function well so if this protein configuration is disturbed or the, this is not cleared they will entangle they will form tangles and when these tangles are formed they this neuron to neuron connection is lost so there is no talking between the neurons because it, it's like the road blocks or it's like the traffic jam happening because of these um proteins which are uh, blocking the road so neurons cannot talk with each other so in each but e each of these diseases there are different kind of protein malfunctioning happening so this chart is showing all that so the most famous one is the amyloid and the tau which happens in um, alzheimers then huntington huntington is actually a protein and that's why this disease got its name from this and this was discovered by a scientist who 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 is named who, whose name was huntington so this is like the carry forward of that so here in, um, in the A, uh, als these are the particular proteins which are not uh, which are entangled or their configuration is lost so this particular figure tells about all that protein aggregation um, going wrong in different diseases now let's go into little bit about in alzheimers so this figure here tells like how the brain of an alzheimers patient changes so this just like the structure so with age our brain shrinks so that's the normal aging effect on the brain so normal memory loss happening um, it happens with the age but this is what it looks like in the case of alzheimer's patient so this is all shrunken so this is the region which is involved in your cognition this is all this thing is shrunken 
and extreme shrinkage of hippocampus. Hippocampus is the region which is responsible for memory. So this is all shrunk in here. So, so drastic effect on the brain structure. And then you have, if you see uh, this, um, this structure of the brain, the inside of the brain. So this is the healthy neuron and this is the dying neuron. And this dying neuron has this plugs. So these are the proteins which are gathered here. And the, they inhibit the uh, transmission. And if the transmission is not happening, uh, we lose the neurons. So you have heard me saying this. If uh, neuroplasticity, like if, if you want to remember something, we have to constantly uh, uh, remind ourselves of this. And when we are remembering our connections, our neuronal connections are becoming stronger. And if we don't remember something, these neuronal connections get lost. So our brain is, um, our brain decides which thing is important and which is not. So the important one is which you are remembering again and again. So brain will uh, send every bit of its energy to preserve that neuronal connection, which is important to you. And the thing which is not important to you, that particular neuronal connection would get lost. And all this happens when we are sleeping. So this neuronal um, cleansing happen happens when we sleep. And I will tell you like why sleep is so important for this uh, protein tangling to avoid this protein tangling. Because this we need to do it in sleep. So just a little... Um, history about the Alzheimer, so uh, Alzheimer's disease. So it was in 1906, uh, a Louis Alzheimer, he, when he was 27, he discovered this disease. And this was the first patient in which uh, this disease was discovered. So when this patient died, in uh, when uh, this patient was 55 year old, she died and a Louis Alzheimer was doing his PhD. So he took the brain of this patient and did cross sections and was amazed to see that this brain structure looked very different from the normal brain because it was filled with this amyloid plugs and tau proteins. So this is how it was discovered. And here just see this figure. So this was the uh, person who was doing self-portrait. So this was when he was uh, first, um, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer. So first time, like very early phases when he was normal, this was a self-portrait. And from 67 to 2000, this is when the disease was in the highest peak. So there was memory loss. These are the symptoms which was associated with the disease. And this is how Alzheimer's affects us. It's like so bad that we... This was a person who was seeing himself and drawing it. So it's a self-portrait. But he could not see himself. So this, this is the devastating disease. Like the, You can see how it, it goes. So... Um, Alzheimer has different stages. So if this, this is a person who is in 30s, so around 60s, if, it is, if there is no genetic link or anything, then during 60s, it will remain asymptomatic. And whole of this decade, it is asymptomatic and it is developing slowly. Uh, around 70s, you will have mild cognitive impairment and Mostly during this stage, it is neglected because it is considered that it is just aging disorder and nothing else. So mostly it is neglected during this period. And then around 80s, it is then it will start showing memory loss and the other symptoms which are related. And suddenly it is progressed to the highest form, the dementia. So this is the region, uh, reason why neurodegenerative diseases are, cannot be tracked earlier because it's very asymptomatic. But people are working to, um, research is ongoing to get some by marker or some uh, blood marker so we can track, the, track people for these diseases so we can treat the patients early. Uh, during the asymptomatic phase or we know whether this person will progress or the or not. 
but still there is not, no such um, test, diagnostic test, which we can do. So why we need to understand, we all know up till now that why it is important to understand, but the, but here the stats will show you further. So the word population is aging. And so this is the stat like here around 2050, this will, this, these are the number of millions of people who will get dementia, 125 million people around 2050. And it's a cost burden on the government because um, there is no, no, um, no cure yet. And uh, the patient needs complete help during that time. So that's why. And, and if we know about the disease, if we know the science behind the disease and why it happens, um, and then we can div change our lifestyle, we can modify our lifestyle, we can reduce the incident incidents, or we can delay the onset. Uh, you will be surprised to know that there is this thing called brain resilience. I will talk about this, that after, uh, like if, let me just go through that and then I will tell there what is brain resilience and brain reserve. So very important thing. So awareness is important. And that's why I think um, attending this meetup is important because you are understanding the physiology and why this thing happens. So you can devise methods to change your lifestyle and reduce the symptom, reduce the uh, inflammatory things or have good sleep or do exercise and whatever is required to reduce the inflammation levels or stress levels in the body. So this is why we need to understand and why it is challenging to treat uh, neurodegenerative disease. Brain is very complex. We still don't know a lot about brain. Early detection is not the uh, Still, we don't have a lot of devices to early detect. It's a decade period where the disease is asymptomatic. Then there is blood-brain barrier, which is challenging because it protects us to uh, certain um, like small inhibitors or, or uh, drugs. If you are giving, it cannot pass the blood-brain barrier. So special, uh, special treatment is necessary for treating the brain diseases. And then it's heterogeneity, like one size fits all treatment approach cannot be applied. Personalized treatment plans should be devised because every person's disease looks very different. And then clinical trial challenges and then neuronal loss. And once a neuron is lost, it cannot be repaired. That's the important thing. Once it is damaged, it cannot be repaired. You can form new neurons, but one you have lost, you will not be able to repair it. So these are the challenges. But now, can you delay the onset of progression? Let's move to the hopeful part of the presentation. So now I was talking about this brain resilience or brain reserve. So what is this? It is the brain's ability to maintain normal cognitive function despite the presence of pathological changes, such as those found in Alzheimer's disease or other neurodegenerative conditions. So this was a very uh, crucial thing which you should know. Like uh, two old people, after their death, their brain were uh, dissected. And these two persons, they showed the physiology, they showed the pathology of the disease. Uh, they showed tau tangles or they showed that um, amyloid plugs, all that, both of them. But one showed the symptoms, one doesn't. That's the difference. If you have these amyloid plugs or these tau tangles, then also you can avoid the onset of the symptoms. And that is what it is, what brain reserve or brain resilience is. So, uh, how can we develop this brain reserve or brain onset? Through lifestyle factors, neuroplasticity, somebody is protected by genes also. So there is like the positive uh, gene if you are carrying, which, is, um, which gives you lower risk of developing uh, AD. And that gene is EPOE2, so EPOE uh, epsilon 2. So this particular gene if you, if you are carrying, you will have less chances of development. And then there are lifestyle factors. 
uh, let's go into that lifestyle factors what are they so um role of diet so this is the list of diet which is less inflammatory healthy of diet which can be included in the in the included and it's helpful to avoid neurodegenerative diseases so mediterranean diet so there's a confusion here so mediterranean diet doesn't mean everything because if you see now the traditional mediterranean diet is also modified so if i am saying mediterranean uh, the researchers actually used diet which is rich in fruits vegetables whole grains legumes nuts seeds olive oil fish and uh, limiting red meat processed foods and added sugar so if this is the diet this was the this was this is from a research right so they showed that if people are using mediterranean diet the alzheimers there is a risk reduced risk of developing alzheimers and cognitive decline and then there is this dash diet which is a low salt diet then mediterranean dash diet combined com combination of two and then antioxidant rich diet now you can understand why antioxidant rich because redox uh, redox oxidative oxidative species that free oxygen can damage your dna and can damage the neurons so that is why it is important to have antioxidant rich foods in your diet and then the uh, increase omega 3 fatty acids so our brain is mostly fat water uh, so fats are important for brain this myelin sheets which are covering the um, body of the neurons they are actually fats so we need to have uh, omega 3 good fats and reduce the saturated fats water is also necessary um, and then the balanced diet including vitamin b12 d magnesium so these are particular these these vitamins are actually uh, less in everyone so if we are not going into sunshine and most of the time in winters vitamin d levels get uh, goes very low vitamin b12 most of the people have low vitamin b12 so th these is important to include in the diet So now, sleep. I was talking about sleep, and I've given a talk on sleep in detail. But why sleep is very important? Because when you are sleeping, you are doing this glymphatic clearance. This is the figure which shows what is happening. When you are sleeping, you are actually clearing all the waste, and you need to clear the waste. If your waste is aggregated there, then your plugs' uh, speed will just amplify uh, and so you need to have a good night sleep and it doesn't mean that 4 um, hour or 5 hour sleep is good you are getting up next day feeling fresh but you need to have like a 7 hour sleep at a stretch because sleep happens in different phases 90 minute phase uh, cycles uh, sleep we have and it is divided into four phases i will not go into details a very big topic to cover here but in certain phases of the sleep only this glyphatic you know, clearance is happening it's not happening throughout the 7 hour or 8 hour window so that is important to understand also so and the and it is uh, clear uh, it is clearing are the synaptic homeostasis it is maintaining the synaptic homeostasis memory is being consolidated so our hypothalamus is getting refreshed all the inflammation and oxidative stress is cleared when we are sleeping and autophagy autophagy is the eating up of cells so eating up of uh, dead cells or dying cells or clearing up so body can focus on producing more so sleep is very important and this slide will tell you why it is important to avoid neurodegenerative diseases so these are this is the thing and this actually shows the whole mechanism how it is happening so now other factors which can help you to reduce neuroinflammation neuroinflammation is a very complex process and uh, it is controlled by many different factors 
but these are some of the factors which can be included to control so diet i talked about it sleep we all know number 3 is exercise exercise is very important and why it is important this figure will tell you a little bit what is happening when when you are exercising and you don't need to exercise too much 150 minutes a week is enough like just raise up your heart so your um, your uh, you your heart is working a little bit more when your heart works more it pumps up more uh, more blood to the extremities and you will breathe better when you are sleep when you are doing exercise so exercise is very important and we have covered uh, exercise in one of the meet up in detail what happens the mechanism the science behind it and here i just want to mention it sometimes the um, the managing part right the the things which we can do are very simple like and when you hear all this you think like oh these are very simple things it's a like very generalized thing you are telling but actually these generalized and very simple things are very difficult to do and very difficult to do consistently and these are the things which we require just we don't need fancy things uh, to avoid uh, these diseases we just need a constant consistent exercise plan for us a healthy diet good night sleep and things to manage our stress and how can we can manage stress if we are uh, engaging in social connections um then there is cognitive stimulation you need to do certain things like solving puzzles or reading learning new skills or creating new hobbies this is how you are stimulating your brain and this meet up is also one of the thing we are actually exercising our brain here so uh, things like that which is taking you from your comfort zone to something where you are learning and when you are learning you are making new neural neuronal connections and so maintaining a healthy weight is also important because obesity is linked with inflammation and when there is inflammatory cells in our body it will affect your brain and managing chronic conditions related to inflammation again smoking and alcohol increases inflammation in the body and environmental toxins are also avoid because they also can cross the blood brain barrier and do in neuro inflammation so here is the end this is the end um, when i will cover different diseases um, in detail we will go into the science of all this how these things are doing um, reducing neuro inflammation what's the science behind it we will cover it all uh, go into deep uh, detail about this and So yeah before we conclude I would like to encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel this is the only way you can support this and this will help to spread the spread uh, the knowledge to others and people will discover it in this way So yeah um I want you to I want to leave you with a message of hope and optimism despite the challenges posed by neuro 